cloth. It's a fairly complex thing to do, although once you learn the series of movements to get the job done, you find it surprisingly easy to adapt it and do it over. It's mostly a matter of understanding that we need to build an object, in this case a pole. We need to take a plane and turn that into cloth, and then we're going to make the uh, cloth act like it's being affected by wind. And so let's just go ahead and get into it. We're going to go ahead and create a polygon cylinder like that. Pretty small and long, so narrow and long. And then we're going to go ahead and create a polygon plane, which will later become cloth. We're going to want to uh, look at this uh, from multiple dimensions in just a moment, but we can do some of the initial lining up manually like this, looking at it only within the what Maya calls the perspective, in other words, a true 3D perspective. Now we go into this mode and we pull out the other flat perspectives and we go ahead and do the painful job of lining this up. We're looking here on this perspective right down the top of the pole and so the flag should really turn into a line goes right like that. Now uh, this one needs to be scooted down. This one needs to be scooted back. That's pretty good there. Let's see how what these look like. Wow, that one looks pretty good. And so does that one. We're in good shape. It's lined up in every view. Uh, we're ready to go. We'll go back to the main perspective. And then what we're going to do is go up to Window, go to Outliner. Now this worked differently in class. I had to use the left button there. And someone in class pointed out that I could use the uh, a keystroke. But what we'll do here is, since this is the way it works on mine, and I think is the way it's supposed to work, I'm going to choose the plane with my middle button and then just push it up to the cylinder. And now that plane is parented to the cylinder. Now, watch what happens. If I move the pole, the plane moves. If I can move the plane independently, actually, like this, and I'll undo that just to get back to where we were, so the parenting is in one direction only. The plane is dependent on the pole. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to select the pole, which also selects the plane. Then we're going to go ahead and create a deformer, make it nonlinear. Uh, and we need to go to animation and we have to go to create deformer and it's going to be wave right here now you could pull up that box if you want and there are some um, attributes like the amplitude and the wavelength of the wave phenomena but we'll just take the default here and see what happens we'll hit wave uh, my little drawing scooted up a bit here but that's okay I can pull it back down it's still attached if I pull that pole down and the flag didn't come with it I'd be in big trouble all right, so we don't need that anymore. I'll get rid of it. Now let's go ahead and uh, go to, and um, we want to select the flag now, not the pole. And we want to go up to end cloth. And that means we need to get the cloth menu. We're going to go up to end cloth. And then what we're going to do is we are going to do a create cloth. Now again, you could look at these attributes here uh, and adjust them just by clicking on that little thing there and then creating the cloth separately. But I'll just do this. I'll just create the cloth like that. Notice this little thing that popped up. This little icon there that seems to be a circle maybe with the cross in the middle. That's there to tell us that this plane has been turned into cloth and there's a new object in existence now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into vertex mode. Now it's important that we anchor down, if you will, the two points of the flag on the pole, this one here. So I'm going to click on that. I didn't quite get it. Let me do it again. I'm going to go back into vertex mode. All right, I'm going to click that. It should turn yellow. There it is. Then I'm going to go down here and click that. That didn't work. Let me try again. I'm going to try again. One more time. Oh, I'm not in vertex mode. Just a second. Back into vertex mode. Uh, there he is right there. Oh. Right there. Ah, got that one. 
Now hold the shift key down and that one. There we go. Now with those two things marked and with the flag parented to the pole, now what we can go ahead and do is create a constraint so that the flag will behave as if that part of it was attached to the pole and can't be moved. So that's what the constraint is. Nail this cloth, nail this plane to the pole right here and you just go down. Oh, oh excuse me. Um, one thing that I need. No, no, that's right. I'm going to go ahead and create the constraint. Uh, excuse me. Uh, oh, there it is. Transform. Sorry. There it is. Oof. Now I've done that. Now what I want to do is I'm going to select the flag and then I'm going to select the pole. So with my shift key and then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go to end cloth and I'm going to go ahead and hit passive. In other words, the animation isn't an active thing on the part of the cloth. The cloth is moving with respect to a force put under it uh, and that's what we call being passive. So boom, it's a passive situation now. And now what we're going to go ahead and do is go to uh, fields and go to air and create it. And again, we could we could pull up that box there and adjust some parameters, but let's just do the default and see what happens. We put air in the scene. Now we run our flag and look at that. It's actually moving. So let's go ahead and shade it smooth. And there it is. Our flag's moving. And you can see that, you know, it's tied down here and here. It's not tied in the middle and it's flopping pretty good. There's the wind and there's also, by the way, a gravitational effect. And the net effect is that it looks somewhat like a real flag moving. All right. Uh, thanks for listening.